Welcome to a quick tutorial on Logger Pro manual data entry. What we're going to take a look at is the uh, uh, data entry table right here, which pops up when you first uh, open Logger Pro the first time. We're going to see what the effects of adding data into that into this area right here, which is your graph, which also pops up the first time you open Logger Pro. And we'll take a look at a couple of the tools associated with dealing with manual data entry. Let's go ahead and get started. Oftentimes we use Logger Pro to gather data from sensors, but it can just as well be used to um, put in data that we would like to graph. Uh, man, rather than graphing manually, what we'd like to do is Logger Pro to do the graph for us. So you notice what, we just, what I just did there is I added some data into the top of these open columns right here. X, just like any... Um, uh, like Excel or something like that, any sort of spreadsheet. And as soon as that happens, notice that the data point pops up into, let's see, there we go, pops onto the graph right here. And that's what we're going to use data, uh, the Logger Pro to graph our data. I'm going to add some more points. All right, there's some data that's been manually entered. Now, if you don't like the way it looks on the graph, as far as in this case right here, we're a little crunched in, you can use the command up at the top here looks like this uh, A, which is an auto scale. If I hit that auto scale, it'll pop the data to fill up the screen. If it's a little too close, you can go just to the, uh, just to the right of it. There's some little, uh, kind of small where you look, but there's some small magnifying glasses. I'll use that zoom out. and gives me a nice uh, view of my data. And we'll start from there. So you can kind of see the data is on our table, but now what we'd like to do is notice that the data doesn't really have a name. I've just got whatever is along the x-axis and whatever's along the y-axis. I'd like to go ahead and change that to reflect uh, what the actual data represents. Let's just say this is a motion problem. So in this case, the x-axis is going to be time. We'll make this a motion graph. And you can see if you just double-click, that's what I just did, double-clicked on the column itself. So you're going to be double-clicking like in this window right here for x. That's how you name that column. Pops up this window, and in this case, what we'll do is we'll just call this time. We can give it a short name, T. That'll be useful uh, later when we st if we ever start using these uh, data in uh, equations. And you can put units in there as well. I'll go ahead and say done. And now what you notice, besides the labeling of the table right here, we also had the bottom portion of our graph labeled for us. And that's the usefulness for this. I'm going to go ahead and do it for the y-axis as well. There we go. Now we have our y-axis labeled uh, in x meters. And you can see that it also has changed the uh, label on the graph as well to show position. Now, suggestive of the fact that this data right here, position data, is in red and our graph is in red, uh, suggests that we can actually control how the data is presented in the graph. And again, if we double click on the column itself, it'll give you some options for that. Uh, you can kind of see in this uh, choice box they give you, we just looked at the column definition, but if you slide over here to options, you can have some other controls. And in this case, this is where you can control the color of your data. So in this case, I'll just go ahead for reference, I'll change it to blue. If the data is difficult to see, if the points are hard to see, you can change the size of the points. Often filling in a filled circle that's fairly large, you'll see here, helps you see your data points and that can be helpful some of the time. One more item I'd like to talk about for uh, labeling is the graph itself. Now to lo label the axes, you have to go over as we did to the data table and click on either of the data because that's what you're actually um, uh, manipulating. But if I'm interested in changing something on the graph, I double click the graph itself and I get a new uh, window that allows me in this case to uh, put in a title for my graph and I'll show you what that looks like. And now you see we have a label across the top of our graph. This is nice for when we go to print off our graph. Uh, you can uh, either, uh, if you right click on the graph, you can actually copy the graph. That basically puts a picture of the graph on your uh, clipboard to be popped into another document. But you can also print these pages and have them associated with a uh, lab report or something. All right, let's talk about analyzing the data right now. Now we've got our manual points uh, already in the system here and now what we'd like to do is use one of the tools up here uh, to get ourselves a best fit line. 
And to do that, we'll come up to the top here and you can kind of see this one right here. It looks like a blue curve with a red line going through it. That function right there is a, uh, is a linear fit. And in this case, it looks like we have a line. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that and you see how convenient that is. That basically puts a line directly, a best fit through your points. And it also brings up this box. Now I'm gonna change the appearance. This may be something that you will want to do as well because it actually defaults to a pretty small box. But I'm gonna go ahead and increase the font size so you can see this a little bit better. And now you'll notice that this data has been given a linear fit, shows you the form of a line. And then it all, what it also does then is it shows you the slope that that line is going through, and it also shows you the B or B intercept, which makes sense uh, from our graph. So it's a very convenient tool uh, called uh, linear fit. Along with linear fit, I'd like to show you one other tool that's useful is uh, up on the toolbar here. You can see the, over to the side, it looks like a kind of a curve like this almost like a hill with a little ski on it right here. That is called the tangent tool. And the tangent tool can be nice because what it does is it pops up a box. Once again, a rather small box. So I'm going to zoom this out a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. And what this uh, box does is it allows you to drag the mouse to each of the points uh, of your data and it'll give you the slope at that location. Now in this case a straight line, the slope is going to be the same, but it's a little hard to see, but if you were to, if you kind of uh, concentrate in right here, you'll see a darker black line, almost looks like a little segment right there that shows where you're measuring the slope at that location. And then as you move your mouse pointer, that black little area uh, moves. And then if this were a changing slope, you would see that each of those slopes are registered in this uh, window right here. Two very convenient features for uh, working with manual data. Thanks for joining me.